Hi everyone. So in this video, we are going to discuss uh, wireless LAN, uh, specifically 802.11. So that's standard and the related uh, terminologies. So wireless LAN, for example, there are some group of nodes that may be a handset, that may be laptop or tablet. So they, they are some group of nodes and they want to establish a network, but they don't have wires. They want to establish that, that network using wireless as a medium, so wireless medium. So what happens? They try to find out a facilitator for their communication are a leader for them. So for example, this is the facilitator, which is going to facilitate the exchange of information between these all nodes. And this facilitator specifically can send and receive data with those nodes and then can forward that information to some other node. So that is like in mobile communication, we have tower that's known as BTS. So our handset, our mobile sends the signals to that tower and that tower is actually facilitate us to get connected with some other friends. And this, in this case, in wireless local area network, that facilitator is known as access point or the wireless access point. So the name for that facilitator is this, that's access point. And now, this, this group of wireless network nodes, which are using a common wireless access point, in this case, this black one, this is access point. So they are using this common wireless access point and this group of nodes, they collectively, so they collectively are known as basic service set. So this is, this is the definition of basic service set, that group of wireless network nodes using a common wireless access point is known as basic service set or BSS. And now the area of these BSS is dependent on the signal strength of access point. So remember, access point will have an antenna. Of course, these all nodes will also have an antenna because we are talking about wireless communication. So the area of this BSS, for example, at this time I have shown that this is in circular shape, so this is almost, this is the shape of this BSS area, but this area actually depends on the characteristics of the antenna which has been designed, which has been installed on this access point. Because normally we think that the radiation pattern by some antenna is like equally in all directions, which is the case with omnidirectional antennas. But nowadays, we have some of the antennas which can actually radiate in some specific direction. So for example, we say, just go in this direction, but do not send any signal in this direction. So we can also have some directional antennas. So in this case, our radiation pattern will be like this. Our area will be like this. This area may not be counted there. So actually, this is really a specialized version of those antennas. But the point is that this DSS area is dependent on the signal strength of access point. So sometimes we may have like shape, like so instead of this complete circular, we can have some of the region which may not be covered because of any reason. So we'll say now at this point, this is our DSS. Instead of complete circular shape, at this time, we can have this shape of our DSS. So shape depends on the uh, antenna. Now, uh, now the second thing is that this access point actually advertises itself, or this access point introduces itself with the nodes which are which which want to use it. So this advertises itself with the help of an identifier. That identifier is known as BSS identifier. And that BSS identifier is actually dependent on the MAC address. So this is the MAC address of this access point. And by using that MAC as address, it is going to announce itself. It's going to advertise itself. So after this advertisement, every node will have information about that access point. So in addition to that BSS ID, we also have another identification which we normally use. 
that is known as SSID and that is actually human readable. So when we go somewhere and we just turn on our Wi-Fi, we see different options like this and with different names. So when we say different names, like here, these are actually SSID. So that is service set identifier. So the service set identifier is human readable and then we have different options and then we just click some any one of them for which we have permission, for example. And then we select this service ID and then we just become part of that. Okay, so that is SSID, the human readable identifier of a wireless LAN is known as SSID. For example, in my case, for example, this may be this name. This is the SSID of my wireless LAN at my home. Now, once the node has got all the information, are, are this node, or every node has got the information about this access point, information means they have the SSID for that, then this node actually sends a request to this access point that yes, please allow me to use this network. And now this access point, depending on the username and password, can allow this node to be part of this network or this access point may not allow that node to be part of that network. So if this is going, going to allow that specific node to be part of the network, then we call that they have made an association. So what we say, once the access point has granted the request, node is said to be, be in association with access point. And node itself is actually known as a client or wireless station, SDA. So once they have uh, established an association, this, is, this node is known as SDA station, wireless station, and they are said to be in association. So these are the basic terms which we use in wireless lens.